Now, in a massive defense breakthrough, the Chinese military has reportedly developed new technology that improves the performance of high-energy laser systems. China has recently made a significant breakthrough in laser weapon technology. China is leveraging emerging technologies and disruptive innovations to enhance its military capabilities. In recent years, the U.S. has also unveiled several powerful laser-based systems, such as the LW-30 anti-drone weapon and the WJ-600AD drone that can carry a laser pod. However, none of these systems can match the power and performance of the latest breakthrough that China claims to have achieved. China has been pursuing the goal of developing the world's most powerful laser system, and they have confirmed a new breakthrough. This innovation could give China an edge over the U.S. in sea, land, and space warfare. So, how did China develop this new technology? What are the implications for the global balance of power? And what are the challenges and risks of using laser weapons in space? Join us as we discuss how China just made another huge advancement in space laser weapons. China has been working on advanced weapons like powerful lasers, electromagnetic railguns, and high-powered microwave devices for possible use in a future light war involving attacks on satellites in space. This is part of Beijing's efforts to counter America's significant advantage, which relies on a network of satellites for precise military operations conducted far from U.S. territory. The concept of a space-based laser weapon was first revealed in a 2013 article published in the Chinese Optics Journal by three researchers, Gao Minghui, Zheng Yongkuang, and Wang Zihong. All of them are affiliated with the Changcheng Institute for Optics, Fine Mechanics, and Physics, which is a leading center for laser weapons technology. According to the article, the space-based laser weapon would consist of a large-scale laser device mounted on a satellite that could emit high-energy laser beams to damage or destroy enemy satellites in low Earth orbit. The article claimed that such a weapon would have several advantages over ground-based or airborne laser systems such as long-range, high-power, and low-atmospheric interference. The article also suggested that China should develop a comprehensive strategy for space warfare, including offensive and defensive measures, as well as legal and diplomatic aspects. It argued that China should seek to establish its dominance in the electromagnetic spectrum, which is essential for communication, navigation, and intelligence in modern warfare. China's interest in space-based laser weapons is not surprising, given its growing rivalry with the United States in the domain of space. China has been developing various anti-satellite capabilities, such as kinetic kill vehicles, jamming devices, and cyber attacks. In 2007, China conducted a controversial test of direct ascent anti-satellite missiles that destroyed one of its own weather satellites and created a large amount of space debris. The United States has also been pursuing its own space-based laser weapons program, known as the Space-Based Laser Integrated Flight Experiment, which was initiated in 1996 but canceled in 2002 due to technical and budgetary challenges. However, some reports indicate that the program may have been revived under a classified project called Excalibur. Now, though, China has just revealed something major that could alter the balance of power. The People's Liberation Army has recently made a significant breakthrough in a crucial weapons program that could reshape the nature of warfare. Chinese scientists have reported unexpected success in the development of a high-powered microwave or HPM weapon. In January of 2023, Wang Wenha, the deputy director of China's Northwest Institute of Nuclear Technology, received the National Science and Technology Progress Award for his research on directed energy, which is integral to HPM weapons. HPM systems have the capability to incapacitate electronic equipment by generating intense electromagnetic pulses that can damage or disrupt their circuits. In today's era, where most military systems, from tanks and aircraft to communication devices and satellites, rely heavily on electronics, these weapons have the potential to revolutionize the way wars are conducted. Warships are expected to be equipped with HPM weapons to intercept incoming missiles by disabling their guidance systems or detonating their warheads prematurely. 
The HBM project, in conjunction with other initiatives involving lasers and electromagnetic pulses, forms part of the Chinese government's Assassin's Mace, or Trump Card, program. This program is designed to counter a technologically superior adversary by disabling or destroying the technology that gives the opponent the edge. The term Assassin's Mace refers to a mythical weapon that can defeat a more powerful enemy with a single blow. The Chinese government hopes to achieve this effect by developing and deploying advanced weapons that can surprise and overwhelm the enemy's defenses. In his 2016 book, The Hundred Year Marathon, Michael Pillsbury, a consultant for the Pentagon, recounted a notable event. He described the first instance in which the United States faced defeat in a simulated war game. This happened when his team was tasked with using China's Assassin's Mace weapons as the opposing force. The Assassin's Mace weapons are part of a secret program that aims to develop and deploy advanced weapons that can surprise and overwhelm the enemy's defenses. Some of these weapons include high-powered microwave systems, anti-satellite missiles, hypersonic vehicles, and stealth drones. He wrote that in the exercises, whenever the China team used conventional tactics and strategies, America won decisively. However, in every case where China employed assassin's mace methods, China was the victor. Richard Fisher, a senior fellow at the International Assessment and Strategy Center, suggests that China's recent advancements go beyond the scope of the assassin's mace program. Instead, they signify a broader shift towards fifth-generation warfare concepts. This shift encompasses areas such as cyber warfare, electronic warfare, and space warfare, all of which incorporate autonomous weapons. Fisher argues that China is pursuing a strategy of information dominance that seeks to control and exploit the information environment in all domains of warfare. The key to this transformation is the Chinese military's Strategic Support Force, or SSF, branch, established in December of 2015. Fisher explains that this new branch consolidates the military's new weaponry and symbolizes the weaponization of extensive information capabilities along with the militarization of outer space. The SSF is responsible for developing and employing most of the PLA's space, cyber, electronic, and psychological warfare capabilities. It also oversees technical reconnaissance, information support, and strategic deterrence missions. The SSF is composed of two main departments, the Space Systems Department and the Network Systems Department. The Space Systems Department controls nearly every aspect of PLA space operations, including space launch and support, space warfare, and space-based intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. The Network Systems Department integrates all strategic information operations units in the PLA, including those responsible for cyber warfare, electronic warfare, psychological warfare, and technical reconnaissance. The SSF also has several subordinate units that specialize in various domains of warfare, such as the Electronic Countermeasures Brigade, the Cybersecurity Brigade, and the Space Engineering University. Space warfare gained significant attention during the Cold War, a period of geopolitical tension between the United States and its allies the Soviet Union and its allies from 1947 to 1991. During this time, both superpowers engaged in a space race, competing to achieve scientific and technological milestones in outer space, such as launching artificial satellites, sending humans to orbit, and landing on the moon. In 1967, the United States, the United Kingdom, and the Soviet Union came together to sign the Outer Space Treaty, which has since been ratified by 105 countries. This treaty established regulations governing the utilization of outer space and prohibited the placement of nuclear warheads or other weapons of mass destruction in orbit, on celestial bodies, or in outer space by any nation. The treaty also declared that the exploration and use of outer space should be for peaceful purposes and benefit all countries. However, the treaty did not explicitly forbid the deployment of conventional weapons in space. Notably, China has been actively developing weapons with the aim of destroying or incapacitating satellites. In 2007, China conducted an anti-satellite test in which it used a kinetic kill vehicle to destroy one of its own weather satellites 
creating a large amount of space debris. In 2013, China launched a rocket that reached an altitude of more than 10,000 kilometers, demonstrating its potential to target satellites in geostationary orbit. In 2015, China tested a co-orbital ASAT weapon, which can maneuver close to a target satellite and disable or destroy it. This is a particular concern because satellites play a crucial role in the U.S. military's capabilities and are considered a vulnerable point. Satellites provide essential functions such as communication, navigation, intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, early warning, and missile defense. The loss or degradation of these functions could impair the U.S. military's ability to operate effectively and maintain situational awareness in a conflict scenario. Moreover, China's ASAT weapons could also threaten civilian satellites that support global commerce, transportation, weather forecasting, disaster management, and scientific research. The National Interest in International Affairs magazine reported on March 10th that China's military is developing powerful lasers, electromagnetic railguns, and high-power microwave weapons for use in a future light war involving space-based attacks on satellites. The magazine cites a Chinese military journal from 2013 where researchers disclosed the idea of placing a five-ton chemical laser in a low Earth orbit. They wrote that, in future wars, the development of ASAT or anti-satellite weapons is very important and that the space-based laser weapon system will be one of the major ASAT development projects. The Diplomat article reported on March 11th that China's progress in high-powered microwave weapons could potentially undermine the effectiveness of even the most advanced U.S. missiles. It said these weapons would undermine the efficacy of even the most advanced U.S. missiles and applications could also include its use as an anti-satellite ASAT weapon or incorporation with missiles in order to overcome enemy air defenses. Richard Fisher also mentioned that through the use of space-based laser platforms, China could realize a concept reminiscent of Ronald Reagan's Strategic Defense Initiative. This initiative, also known as Star Wars, was a proposed U.S. program in the 1980s to develop space-based weapons that could intercept and destroy incoming nuclear missiles. Fisher said that overall, the threat of fifth-generation weapon systems is growing and that Chinese military doctrine and developments are making a significant push in this direction. In a hypothetical conflict with China, the deployment of China's proposed laser system could have dire consequences, according to Fisher. He suggests that in such a scenario, these lasers could potentially disable all of the satellites the United States relies on for targeting China, communication with its forces, and optical or electronic surveillance. Satellites are essential for the U.S. military's capabilities, such as global positioning systems or GPS, early warning, missile defense, and command and control. Without these capabilities, the U.S. military would lose its situational awareness and operational effectiveness in a conflict scenario. This could rapidly render the U.S. military blind and susceptible to Chinese attacks, which could exploit their information superiority and space dominance. Also, if the U.S. were to launch its own strike, these lasers could intercept incoming warheads. Fisher also believes that this system would surpass the capabilities of the current U.S. anti-ballistic missile system known as THAAD or Terminal High Altitude Area Defense, which is presently deployed in South Korea. THAAD is an American anti-ballistic missile defense system designed to shoot down short, medium, and intermediate range ballistic missiles in their terminal phase by intercepting with a hit-to-kill approach. However, THAAD has limitations, such as its range, altitude, speed, and capacity. THAAD can only intercept missiles with a range of 200 kilometers and an altitude of 150 kilometers. It also has a maximum speed of 2,800 miles per second or Mach 8.2, which may not be sufficient to catch up with faster missiles. The development of space-based laser weapons poses serious challenges to the stability and security of outer space. Such weapons could trigger an arms race and increase the risk of conflict in space. Also, they could violate existing international treaties and norms that prohibit the placement of weapons of mass destruction in orbit or the use of force against objects in space. Therefore, it is important that China and the United States engage in dialogue and cooperation 
to prevent the militarization and weaponization of outer space. What do you think about this? Let us know in the comments section below.